All right, so I was on Twitter the other day and I happened to see that Chris Rock finally responded to Will Smith slapping him. And one of the big questions a lot of people had was, did he take it too far? Because if you were watching that performance, at least what I saw in that two minutes, it just did not seem like he really held back at all. He just kind of let it all hang out. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. You know, that's not something where it's a slap and, you know, you get over it quickly. No. After watching the video, it is very evident he is still very deeply hurt by that. And one thing I want to mention for a lot of people, because... Black on black violence, usually people do not press charges. And that is something that black people need to start doing. Stop putting your hands on people. And it's even more crazy seeing this come from Hollywood because I talked about in one of my videos last week that uh, the entertainment industry has a huge influence on the behavior of a lot of black people. Not all, a lot of black people because they may not have uh, positive role models that they can really look up to to guide them. So anyway, um, I wish Chris would have pressed charges and that's something that Black people should definitely start doing. But so if you have not seen the video circulating over the weekend, I am going to play a brief clip of it. Now, there was a lot of swearing and vulgarity and... <laughs> Boy, oh boy. Um, while Chris may be a pretty good comedian, I, I just, <laughs> how explicit his content is, it's just very hard for me to watch without having my spirit grieved. So I'm gonna try to edit this as best as I can. And I'm gonna play a brief clip, take a look, and we're gonna discuss when we come back. And his wife was her son's friend, okay? Now, I normally would not talk about this shit. But for some reason, these niggas put that shit on the internet. I have no idea why two talented people would do something that low down. What the f She hurt him way more than he hurt me, okay? Everybody in the world called him a I tried to call the mother and give him my condolences. He ain't pick up for me. Everybody called him a bitch. They called his wife a president. Everybody called him a All right, so after watching that video, it is pretty evident that Chris had been bottling all of that rage and anger inside for a really long time. And it was almost as if he felt freed by letting that out to the public. And he's like, finally, you get a chance to see how I feel, how I really feel about uh, Will and the slap. And one of the reasons why I believe he waited so long before he responded was A, personal reasons. Because after almost a year, if he was still that emotional about it and worked up, and some people may disagree with me, but looking at him, the hurt in his eyes and just the pain in his voice and how he was just so into it after, if he felt that way after almost a year, imagine if he would have come out and did that a few days or a few weeks after the incident, he probably would have almost broken down in tears. And I mean, come on, what person, especially man, <laughs> wants to break down in tears on national TV? And the other reason I believe he waited so long before he responded was because PR probably encouraged him to wait it out. Because during that time, and for several months, Will Smith got a lot of heat. A lot of people were saying, oh, I don't know if I want to work with him. Um, he was always in the media somehow with people asking what is wrong with Will. Oh, he was painted in this super negative light. So had Chris come out 
shortly after that and responded in this way, then the negative attention probably would have shifted from Will to Chris. So they knew that. So they wanted to give it time to settle down before he responded in this way. So one of the big questions a lot of people had after seeing that performance was, did Chris take it a little bit too far? I mean, you're talking about how Jada stepped outside of her marriage with her son's friend. I mean, that was just like, whoa. And he also talked about how they were interviewing each other, saying, hey, you know, so how do you feel about this infidelity? And I agree that people should be careful how much they air their dirty laundry because you may think a lot of people, and you may have some people out there who support you and say, oh my gosh, I'm here for you. I'm praying for you. But then there are other people who are happy to see this kind of dirt and everybody is not rooting for you. It almost seemed like this performance was therapeutic for Chris. When he was talking about how everybody called Will a B for slapping him, it was at one point where Chris's head was down and he was so into it and the sweat was coming from his forehead and he's just like, everybody called him a B, a B, a B. And then he looks up at one point and the audience is laughing, right? Because they're still in comedy mode. And he's like, oh, <laughs> I'm still in this performance. But he was in expression mode where he was letting it out. And it was almost like after that last B word, it was almost as if Chris gave a sigh of relief. Like, finally, I was able to get that out on the table. Um, you can tell it's something that he had been ruminating about. And I'm sure he's talked to a lot of people he even mentioned that he tried to call Will. When everybody was dogging Will, he reached out, but Will did not respond. Imagine if somebody did you wrong, but you're trying to be the bigger person to say, hey, I'm going to reach out and check on you and try to clear things up, but that person completely ignores you. Um, Yeah, it's going to cause even more rage inside. And one of the things Chris mentioned was how Will hit him knowing that he could beat him. And he used Chris as an easy target due to the hurt he was experiencing. But one thing I thought was really profound of what Chris said during that performance was that Jada hurt Will way more than the slap hurt Chris. And I was like, wow. Because there's nothing like emotional pain. Physical pain, yes, it will sting for a while and it may make a person mad for a while, but that emotional pain, it runs really deep. And a lot of times bullies, they are experiencing deep emotional pain and they look for their easiest targets. You know, I experienced a lot of bullying growing up and not only at school, but also at home. And I had a sibling of mine who was a big bully. <laughs> This person bullied me endlessly. I was a quiet kid. I was a peacemaker. I didn't really pick trouble with anybody, not even at home. But this person had experienced something. And I don't know if I can talk about that on here, but this person experienced something where I understand why they would be hurting deeply. No child should have to go through that. And... But the fact of the matter is they took it out on a lot of other people around them and they just had deep, deep rage, even to this day. And I remember one time, you know, how siblings may have little arguments back and forth here and there. And this person was yelling at me and I decided, hey, I, I was going to defend myself and just say, hey, I don't know exactly what I said because this was a really long time ago. I was just eight years old and this person, I believe, was 12 years old and they were yelling at me and I responded and they got so upset that I was defending myself and responding and nothing super aggressive. They leaped over, they jumped on me and scratched my face so hard. I still have that scratch mark on my face to this day. 
And whenever I look at that sometimes, and I don't think about it too much nowadays, but I used to look at that and, you know, it would cause rage to rise up inside of me. Like, how dare this person leave a permanent scratch mark on my face over basically nothing? But one of the things that I believe is very important is for us not to bottle things inside. We have to find a healthy way to release that rage so that we can move forward. Because a lot of times what people don't realize is holding on to things will hold you back. And after all of these years, I had to find a way to release that person because they left a permanent scratch mark on my face. So a few years ago, I actually reached out to this person because like Chris, right? He tried to reach out to Will via phone, but Will didn't answer. And same thing with this person. They didn't want to pick up my calls or really anybody's calls, right? And it's not that I hadn't been talking to this family member here and there. You know, it wasn't like, oh, I hadn't talked to them since they scratched my face. No, I had, but we just didn't speak that much. And it got to a point where this particular family member didn't really want to talk to anybody. But I, when I reached out to this family member on a few different occasions, they did not respond to me. So I wanted to get my release. And I wanted to be able to move forward from that situation. So what I did was I actually sent a message to this person explaining to them how they hurt me, how it made me feel, how I wanted to respond to them because of what they did. But at the end of the day, what I said in this note to the person was, I am, I am forgiving you. I am releasing you. I love you and I'm not holding any hard feelings against you. So that to me, even just sending that message to this person, it, it released me in some way because I decided to release them and not hold on to it. And maybe there are some people out there watching. You're upset with somebody. Somebody did you wrong. You're confused by what somebody did. And, you know, you have questions. You want to get revenge against somebody because of what they did to you. Right. I know there are a lot of people out there. You may be holding on to different things and it's hard to let go. But I believe one of the first healthy steps you can take is reaching out to that person in some way to try and get clarification. And if nothing more, you're just able to release that energy back to them. If it's not through a phone call, maybe you'll write a letter or you'll send a text message. Some people, you may even choose to write a letter and not send it, but you have to let go of that energy. You cannot continue to hold on to it because it will eat you up on the inside. This is one of the reasons why a lot of people may be dealing with bitterness and different illnesses and disease. So anyway, I just wanted to share that because that is the deeper message with this whole thing that happened with Chris. He had been holding that in for a long time, but he finally got it out. And you know, Will is going to see that. Not sure how he's going to respond, but let me know what you think about Chris's response to Will. Do you think he took it too far? But that is all for now. And I want to thank you so much for watching. And until the next video, take care. God bless you. And I'll see you in the next one.